Hey guys, how's it going? Today we have a special unboxing for you guys. This is a new Motorola Razr Fold 2020 that just came out this year. This is the new foldable version of the Razr smartphone uh, that Motorola just came out with and it is easily one of the most expensive phones I've ever bought. This is the first foldable phone I've ever bought. I never got the Samsung Galaxy Fold because this is the first foldable phone I was interested in. Uh, I had to buy this from the US. It is currently locked to Verizon there. Uh, in Canada, it is also available, but it's extremely expensive, and you need to buy a plan with it. Like, you need to tie yourself to a service provider, which I didn't want to do. This one is, of course, locked to Verizon. I don't have a Verizon plan. I just want to see if I can use it with my current services, maybe, maybe tether it to my current service, uh, maybe use it as a media player. I just want to test out the capabilities of this device. And I also got it cheaper in the U.S. as well. Right, I got it for about $1,100. I bid on this on eBay, so I was able to get it cheaper. It retails brand new for $1,500 and $2,000 Canadian. Uh, so I got it a bit cheaper, although it's more closer to about $1,200 after paying the import duties and taxes and shipping. So anyways, I got it cheaper than the retail price. So anyways, this is the box that it comes with. See the motor logo on the back. I've not had a Motorola device as my main phone for a very long time. I think most people have not. Um, so it's interesting to see what this device could be like. I think Motorola came out with this device to generate some attention, which it definitely did. Um, and then it kind of got upstaged by the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip <laughs> like a month later, which is kind of, um, I feel bad for, for Motorola because Samsung just upstaged them so fast. But I still like the Motorola Razr because um, the design, right? So let's take a look. So this is what's inside the box. You get the phone right here, which looks just like any other tall phone actually unfolded. So just reading off the specs here, this is a P OLED. Of course, it's an OLED display, right? Because it folds. So 6.2 inches is a bit smaller than the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip. And I think the reason for that is because it has like a chin on the bottom, which it has to account for. And the Z Flip does not. Um, has a secondary display with 2.7 inches. Um, so the resolution on the main screen is 373 pixel per inch, 876 by 2142 resolution. Um, and the front display is 800 by 600. And the chipset is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 710. So it is not a high range Snapdragon. It is a mid range Snapdragon, which a lot of people are kind of peeved about, right? Um, because you're paying so much money for this phone, you should be getting a flagship processor, right? And that's something that makes a lot of people turn to the Galaxy Z Flip instead. It runs Android 9, which is not the latest version of Android. It's Android 10, right? Um, so <laughs> my Pixel 2, which is three years old, runs a higher version of Android than this device, which is kind of sad. Um, has 128 gigs of storage, which is not expandable, and 6 gigs of RAM, and 16 megapixel f1.7 camera on the back, and also has a selfie camera, despite the fact that it flips over so you can actually, or folds over so you can actually use the front camera for selfies, but they put a selfie camera in there anyways. Um, I guess that's for video calls. So that's another 5 megapixel f2.0 shooter on the, on the um, secondary camera as well. Um, does not have a 3.5 millimeter jack, unfortunately. So you're going to have to Bluetooth this one. Um, and yeah, Bluetooth 5, USB-C charging. That's all expected. All right. Let's take this out. Um, is there anything else that comes in the box first? Let's see. There's this, what's this? It looks like a Bluetooth speaker that came out of the back. It does look like a Bluetooth speaker, doesn't it? Um, but no, it's you just open it up, <laughs> and that's where the packaging is. So pretty interesting packaging. So there's a Razer, Verizon wireless support right here. So all this is just standard safety stuff. You have a charger right here, right? Motorola branded charger with um this is these are headphones right or earphones yes they're usb-c earphones i believe so let's take a look yep they're usb-c earphones i'm probably not going to use these uh <laughs> i mean yes you could use usb-c earphones but i think most of us who have wired earphones have 3.5 millimeter jacks which we'll probably need an adapter for or we can use Bluetooth earphones instead, which I'll probably be using because I have the Sony WF-1000XM3s. Bluetooth earbuds I'll probably be using. And then we have an adapter here for 3.5mm, so, so kind of Motorola to 
give us this for um, people who like wired earphones and headphones are obviously going to use the 3.5 millimeter connector, right? Um, but I'll probably just use Bluetooth. Um, and then here we have some extra, looks like, tips for your ears. So that's cool they included that. Yeah, different earbud tips, which I'm not going to use because I'm not going to use these bundled earphones. I'm not sure how good they're going to be, but I don't really have high expectations for that. Motorola is not really known for uh, for audio. So anyways, what we want to look at is this phone right here. So again, um, if you guys want to compare, this this is the lip right here, right? This is kind of inspired by the Motorola Razr V3, the original Motorola Razr that came out back in 2004, right? And of course it folds down like this, right? It kind of makes like a noise when it does that. I don't know how, how uh, well you can hear that. Let's see? Anyways, it makes a slight noise. I wouldn't say that it's extremely distracting or anything, but just be aware that it does make a noise. It's not extremely loud or anything, it's, but it's there. And uh, you will hear it in a very quiet environment, I would say. Here's the back, right? This is all plastic, so nothing special going on here. But the front does feel pretty nice, actually. Yeah, the front feels pretty substantial. The back is plastic, but the front feels pretty substantial. And this is that 2.7 inch display, which I actually like better than the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip. Um, so, you know, people might be deciding between the Motorola Razr and the Z Flip. I'm pretty sure most people are going to go for the Z Flip because it has better specs. It's more widely available. And um, there's a lot of things. I think it has the glass screen, right? The foldable glass screen, whereas this is a foldable plastic screen. So there is a lot of improvements on the Z Flip. And it's also cheaper by like $100, I think. So most people will probably go for the Galaxy Z Flip if they want a foldable vertical phone, I guess. But... For me, I got the Razer because I think it's it's more unique, right? Not a lot of people are going to have this phone. It's not very widely available. Um, and to me, it's it's the design is cooler than the Z Flip. I'm just going to say it. The Z Flip looks like a pocket mirror that a woman might pull out of her purse. Whereas this, this looks a lot cooler. And this is like a luxury device, right? And people who are buying the foldable phones, obviously, um, they want to have... For me, I'm an early adopter, right? So... It's kind of the luxury factor, the wow factor as well. And for that, the Motorola Razr has more of that than the Z Flip, I think. So that's why I got this one. And I also want to root for the underdog too, right? Because I know Motorola is struggling. They used to be a great company. They were the, actually they made the first, the very, very first cell phone, right? I think they were the inventors of the very first cell phone. Um, and, you know, now most people don't even no Motorola anymore. So I kind of want to support Motorola, the underdogs. Samsung is this massive company that everyone knows and, you know, they don't really need any more of my money, right? They have enough of other people's money. So I want to support Motorola as well because I like what they're doing. I really like this design as well. And just to compare, I don't have an original Motorola V3, but I do have a Razr 2 here. So this is my Razr 2, which is a luxury edition. I think this one came out in 2007. This is 12 years before this one. Actually, this camera came out this year. I know it's called the Motorola Razr 2019, technically, but no one actually really got it in 2019. So this 2020, right? So 13 year difference here. This has that leather back because it's a luxury edition. Um, so it has a plastic back. And then this one, actually we have the volume controls right here in both of them. So if you can see that volume controls here, volume controls here right? Uh, these are very, very tiny and very reminiscent of the original Motorola volume sliders, which were tiny, which most phones had tiny controls back then, right? USB-C charging, of course, right? Whereas the Motorola original rays are charged with a micro USB and some other buttons here. There's no buttons here. Um, and then this is all, this is all very nicely the polished steel, it looks like. Yeah. So this is all very nice. Um, it's like aluminum or steel or something. But anyways, this is a very nice solid feeling back right here. So this is a very solid looking phone. I mean, the, yes, the back is plastic and the screen itself, you know, is, is plastic. But the actual feel of it is a pretty, it feels pretty hefty in the hand. Like it feels very substantial, which I like, right? 
because not many phones feel like this anymore. I know this is one of the things I really loved about the Essential phone is that it felt really substantial in your hand. It felt like you were holding, it feels like a luxury device, like you're holding something very luxurious, which it is, right? Um, this is a luxury phone. And I know that people online are gonna be saying, well, the specs make it seem like a $400 phone. Well, yes, specs wise, you could say that, but for the feeling wise, the form factor and the uniqueness of this phone, it's definitely, I think definitely more than $1,000. And I know the iPhone 11 Pro, right? I feel like iPhone 11 Pro is $1,000. Um, definitely feels like it has that kind of material, but of course it has the functionality of the folding mechanism, right? So um, yeah, I, a lot of luxury phones, their specs are not that great. Like the old Blackberry Porsche designs, right? Remember those the Lamborghini phones, uh, Torino Lamborghini phones, right? The Virtus, a lot of those luxury devices were actually a lot more costly than the Motorola Razr Fold. They're not as innovative. I think they just had a lot of really glitzy material on them, which drove up the price and their specs were bad too. And yet people still bought those phones, right? And definitely I think the Razr Fold at least gives you some argument some better justification for the price, right? Is that it's one of the few phones on the market that can do this, right? That has this foldable OLED display. Um, how many other phones can say that? Only Samsung, right? That's it. There's really no other uh, manufacturers on the market that can do that. Um, so at least there's some justification. Like, not like those old luxury devices made by Virtu and Lamborghini or like Porsche design, those have no justification whatsoever other than just the materials and the branding, and that's really it, right? Um, now, the Motorola Razr 2 that I have, this one's also, this is of course plastic, it's not as luxurious feeling, but it is pretty light, and people love the flip phone form factor just for having the ability to hang up on people by closing like that, right? And it's very easy to open one-handed, you know, very easy to type on one-handed, and it's also very slim as well. So look how thin this phone was. This was in 2007, right? The Motorola Razr Fold 2020, and it's not all that different, right? So I would say the the Razr and Razr 2 were actually pretty good phones for the time as well. They're pretty cool. Very, very thin for the time. Even by today's standards, I think if you have a phone this thin, it's, it's, it's pretty thin, right? <laughs> So yeah, so Razer 2, very easy to open and close, very pocketable, very portable. Um, now the problem that this phone is trying to solve is that these days, a lot of people are getting phones with taller and taller aspect ratios, right? The Sony Xperia 1 comes to mind. You have the 21-9 aspect ratio, but that's very, very hard um, to actually fit in your pocket sometimes and actually very hard for your thumb to uh, reach up and down the top and bottom of the screen. So I'm going to test that as well. But this fixes one of those issues, which is that it might be hard to pocket. Um, and of course, you just fold it up, it makes it easier to pocket, right? So I can understand why Razer went for that route in the Samsung Z Flip, right? They want to have a very tall phone for watching movies and scrolling through content, but also make it easy to fit into your pocket. Um, and that's not unsubstantial. I think a lot of reviewers, they think that, oh, it's not really that useful. I would rather have the Galaxy Fold where it's a, a tablet that folds up into a phone size form factor. But not all of us are interested in that kind of device. Some of us really do want to carry, um, you know, a larger aspect ratio of phone, but we also want it to be more portable. And that's why the new iPhone SE, for example, right? Uh, why do people still buy the iPhone SE? Why did Apple come with a new one? Because there's still people buying smaller phones right because of the portability because some of us don't have big pockets or women right women wear dresses or skirts they might not have that many pockets or they might not have very deep pockets right and that makes it very useful for people like them and us to have smaller devices that are more portable easier to pocket i can understand the motivations behind making such a form factor right so yeah guys um that is enough talking i do want to show you guys how this phone actually works and let's see how Android 9 looks on this device and uh, how well the folding mechanism works as well. Alright guys, so here are my impressions of the Motorola Razr Fold after I used it for about a day. So first of all, I want to talk about this front 2.7 inch display. Um, it's actually quite useful and this is one of the main reasons why I chose to get the Razr over the Galaxy Z Flip is because of this 
bigger display right here and I think it's much more useful because you can use it you know as a viewfinder a much bigger viewfinder than the one on the Z flip so as you can see there's three buttons on the side you have the on button right here and then you have the two volume buttons um, I feel like the volume buttons are a bit small so it's hard to feel it out right um, and then when you flip it open right the volume buttons uh, yeah they don't feel all that different from the side of the phone which makes it kind of hard to feel it out texturally um, and then the the on button actually goes up here when it's in the open mode so it's a little bit of a stretch because we're used to our on buttons being like right here right and now it's like up here so it's a bit of a stretch so back to the front display here um, yeah so if you open like that uh, you can see a bunch of things on the screen here you can see the time the day and the date um, then you can see your notifications you can actually scroll that or swipe down from the top and see your regular controls right here and then you can also swipe down from the bottom to unlock your device so uh, the other things you can see your notifications on here so this is really useful uh, it's kind of like a smartwatch in that sense that you can kind of get a glance at your notifications right so if I want to see Instagram I can see out here and then uh, I can see my email notifications right here as well Okay, one other convenient feature of the Razer Fold is that the on button actually doubles as a Google Assistant button. So you press it once and it'll turn on the display and you double tap it, Google Assistant will come up. All right, so pretty simple and easy. Just one tap, brings up the display, double tap, Google Assistant. Right, another interesting thing about the Razer is that if you look at the back here, right, notice that it says designed by Motorola, which is now owned by Lenovo, a Chinese company, but it says made in India. So that's pretty interesting, right? I don't know many phones that are made in India because usually smartphones are made in China. So I find that very interesting because Motorola is owned by Lenovo, which is a Chinese company, but they didn't manufacture it in China despite the fact that this phone is very complicated to manufacture. They decided to make it in India instead, which I would assume doesn't have um, as good a manufacturing prowess as China does. So I find that pretty interesting as well. Okay, another thing about this display is that it is an ambient display, but it's not always on. So it's not like my Google Pixel 2 or some other phones I've tried. The ambient display here, um, it will dim after like a second. So, you know, when you swipe up the notifications, it will stay there, but it will dim after a few seconds. And then if you're just looking at the phone, it'll be there for like, yeah, one or two seconds. Um, and then it'll dim after that and this is to preserve battery life and I understand why Motorola did this because There's kind of limited battery life on a phone like this, right? They couldn't really fit a big battery on a phone like this. So That's why the ambient display dims um, It's to preserve the battery life and I'm fine with that Right because you only need to look at it if it's the time or something you're checking You only need to look at it for a few seconds if you're checking notification. It'll be there a little bit longer uh, but it will disappear after you know, like maybe 30 seconds or something like that. And then you can open it. By the way, you can open and close it with one hand. Some reviewers said that you couldn't or it's difficult, but I feel like it's not that difficult. Um, it's not extremely easy, but you have to kind of put your finger under here and then, you know, kind of open it like this. But it's not like extremely difficult or something like that. You can definitely do it, right? All right, so fingerprint sensor works pretty well. Um, as for the usability of this phone, uh, going up and down across the tall display, um, I think it's fine. Like, you have to really stretch if it's like really up to the top or like really down the bottom here. Like, say I want to access the camera here. Like, I, yeah, I do have to reach down here to access it. But um, I feel like most of the time it's okay. Um, haven't really felt myself straining too hard. And that's because um, unlike the Z Flip, so the Z Flip has a bigger display and it doesn't have this chin down here. But because the Motorola Razr has its chin down here, um, it kind of makes the display smaller, but also makes it easier to reach. So you might have to like strain if it's like really up here, like really up here or down here, then you might have to stretch a little bit. But I think for most of my daily tasks, I guess, like opening apps and scrolling through web pages and stuff, I haven't really found it like extremely uh, inconvenient or something like that. So another thing about this display here, um, there it doesn't seem to be a noticeable crease. Like obviously when you fold up the phone like this, you can see, you know, the screen bending like that. But I don't see any crease that's noticeable to me when the phone is unfolded. Um, so 
Motorola did a pretty good job here. I don't think there's a noticeable crease here. Um, also, you can see the bottom of the phone, right? The screen actually recesses into the phone when you fold it, which is pretty cool, right? I like how Motorola did this. Um, just goes to show the technology behind this device, right? You kind of know why it's so expensive. You have that screen kind of just recessing in as it folds. Um, and then some reviewers have also pointed out this screen gap, which is only noticeable like for like a split second. So like while you're folding it like this, then the screen is kind of jutting out and then it goes back in. So it's really only there for like a split second when you're folding it like this, right? And you can't even maintain this position anyways, right? <laughs> yeah, so it's like only here for like a split second, this gap, and then it's gone. So I wouldn't really care too much about this. It's not too much of a concern to me. Like you can't hold this phone in this position really anyways. However, I will note that this phone does not have any resistance rating. So there's no IP67, IP68 rating. So I would still be kind of cautious if I'm taking this phone to the beach or to a swimming pool or something like that. Um, I'm not sure, like I said, this gap here is not going to be visible for a long time or anything, but I would still be kind of cautious about it, right? Because it's not like it's saying it's dust proof or shock proof or water resistant or anything like that, right? And because this is a first generation folding device, um, no one really knows how well it will hold up over time. So that's just kind of a disclaimer here. Take it to the beach or the swimming pool at your own risk, right? <laughs> So open up a web page. Um, you know, OLED display is also really nice, right? That's the standard benefits of OLED. You get the deep blacks, the contrast, and everything. Also, scrolling and reading content on this large vertical display is very nice. So that's the reason why some people like these huge, tall phones is for reading content, which it is really good at. So another thing that the Z Flip does is that it has this... Uh, pseudo laptop configuration where you have it like this and the Z Flip locks into place like this so you can scroll through content and they advertise this as being good for video calls as well because it's like hands free when you do that right I don't find it too useful in on the Motorola Razr you can't really do this you have to kind of hold it you know from the back like this it doesn't naturally it just doesn't stay in this configuration at all which I feel like is fine I think that's just a marketing gimmick by Samsung you don't really need this this mode, right? But uh, yeah, for the Motorola Razr, it doesn't really have it. You kind of have to force it like that. All right, so this phone's pretty good at reading content because of the tall aspect ratio, but what about watching videos? So let's pull up YouTube here, have an LGR video. Play that. All right, so one thing you'll notice is that there is letterboxing on the side, and that's unfortunately going to be an issue for most tall phones, so not just the Motorola Razr, but for the Sony Xperia and for some Samsung Galaxies as well. If they have a tall aspect ratio, like the 21.9 display, then you're going to have letterboxing on the sides because most videos, most content is meant for 16.9 consumption. Um, they're meant for the 16.9 aspect ratio. So unless you have some native 21.9 content, I think Netflix, um, some other services might have some, but it's not very common right now. Uh, so most videos you watch is unfortunately going to have this layer boxing on the side. You can hear the speakers here. Straight away, uh, well, everything as vibrantly as intended. But so this itself, is the full volume right now. That being said, Down firing speakers. Is no of yeah, I would prefer it if the speakers were front facing rather than down firing because that would be louder. That's what I like about the Sony Xperia series, right? Is that they have it facing towards you, which sounds better. Um, but I feel like that was a missed opportunity here. They could have easily put that here. Um, but yeah, the speakers aren't too loud. They're just okay. Colors are... Yeah. Yeah, speakers are just okay. Nothing too special. Display or DSTN passive matrix. That... I don't think they have any Dolby Atmos or any special processing here. But yeah, that's uh, for watching videos. Um, you're going to get letterboxing on most of them. Uh, also, another thing I wanted to use this phone for is play, playing music. So if I go to Spotify right now, right, and I play a song. I'm not going to play too much of it because of copyright reasons on YouTube. But, okay, let's play a song right here. And then, see, I close the phone. And then you can go to Spotify from here. And you can play, pause, go to next track on here. And it has the full album artwork on the 2.7 inch display, which is another thing I like about it, right? 
So it doubles as a pretty nifty music player as well, right? So you go to next track. So you have the regular controls up here. You can also see the artwork up here. Um, and then if you want to go into the full music player, right? Then you can go into Spotify and you can see the full music player right here. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, the, the Razer is a pretty interesting device for, uh, for playing music. Uh, I know that it's an expensive music player, but hey, if you look at any of the audiophile music players out there, the DAPs, right? A lot of them cost over $1,000, like the Sony Walkman, uh, the Hi-Fi Mans, the Aston Kearns. A lot of them cost over $1,000 or even $2,000. And they, I know they have complex audio circuitry inside of them, like DACs and stuff like that. Um, but none of them are actually as cool as this phone, right? <laughs> so this phone doubles as a really nifty, cool music player, if anything, right? Another thing is they included uh, this speaker, actually. So this box here also doubles as a speaker, so you can hear... This is what it sounds like normally, right? If you put inside this box right here, it actually does amplify the sound, which is pretty cool as well. Yeah, so you can hear the song inside the speaker. It is amplified, right? So that's another cool thing uh, is that Motorola included that inside the box. And yeah, it does sound bigger, right? It definitely sounds amplified inside the box. So. I don't know if you ever want to bring this box anywhere, but you definitely could. It's just kind of a uh, an ad hoc Bluetooth speaker solution. Um, so yeah, no headphone jack, so I will have to use my Bluetooth earbuds, or you can use the adapter, but you know you have to carry around a dongle. So another comparison that some people might not have thought about is the comparison to some of these modern flip phones. So. There's flip phones like this. This is a Samsung Galaxy Folder 2. That's right, the Folder 2, not the Fold. Um, these phones are actually budget phones that are geared towards like mostly elderly people or people on a budget or just like hipsters who want to use a flip phone in, I guess, the modern times, right? <laughs> these are literally just flip phones but running Android. And uh, they usually have very entry-level specs. So at least the Razer Fold has mid-range specs. These phones, they usually have very entry-level specs and um, very popular in Asia, actually. So if you go to Korea or Japan, you'll see a lot of people who are on a budget or elderly people using these kind of phones. Right? They're made by Samsung, LG makes some, uh, Docomo in Japan makes some. Uh, so you will see them in stores. They're not very common at all in North America or Europe, I don't think. But um, they are pretty, well, not super popular, but you will see them in Asia. And stores do sell them. They're basically, they don't run the latest version of Android. I think this one's Android 7 or something. This is from 2017. So this is not terribly recent, but it's not really too old either. It's not like the OG Motorola Razr 2, right? This is the OG Razr 2 from the first generation, the OG generation of flip phones, right? That's running um, their own proprietary operating system. That's it's a feature phone, right? Um, and then you have the modern-ish flip phones that's running Android. So you got the touchscreen, you got Google Play Store. It's just using uh, a flip phone form factor. That's it, right? You got the T9 right here. Um, you got the D-pad navigation right here. So it is just an Android phone, but using a flip phone phone factor. And these do exist. They're much more popular in Asia than they are in North America. And then, of course, you got the new innovative foldable OLED display flip phones, right? So it's interesting how we went between these two, two different generations, right? Oh. So it's interesting how we went from these kind of uh, this kind of evolution of flip phones here, right? Originally, we had the OG flip phones, which were really popular. And then we had um, the kind of niche modern flip phones that's running Android, which are only popular for budget consumers and elderly people. And then we have this new innovative foldable OLED display flip phone, which is only popular among like techies and uh, early adopters like myself. Um, <laughs> but that's an interesting comparison, right? So something else I wanted to bring up that I bet other reviewers did not think about is the modern flip phone with the new foldable Razer phone. Of course, the most powerful out of these is going to be this one. Um, this one is probably not even usable anymore. If you want to go back to OG flip phone, you probably can't even use it because the GSM isn't really supported anymore. You you're going to have to use a phone that at least supports 3G because the bands are no longer supported, right? And then the modern flip phones, if you really just want a cheap phone, but you want to be hipster and use a flip phone. So, 
Like, if you want to be hipster and you want to use a flip phone that runs Android, then sure, you can use this phone in modern times. It's it's perfectly doable. It supports all the latest bands. It's not going to have the best specs or the best resolution. It's not going to play the latest games. But hey, if you want to be different, you can get one of these. So, yeah. And of course, if you have the money, you can get one of these. <laughs> And oh yeah, I have to show you guys the motion controls of this device as well. So if you shake it with your wrist like that, it opens up the camera. So this is the primary camera right now. Uh, in the closed mode, you can use it for selfies, which is a lot better than using that secondary camera, I think. And then when you flip it open, and then you have access to the regular back camera, right? It's using the same one. Um, there's nothing really special about the camera here. You've got HDR, flash, timer here, um, auto manual, active photos. Yep. Um, yeah, nothing too special about the camera here. I mean, I can take a picture here. It's the Motorola Razr 2 I have. Take a picture, but there's nothing special, right? Okay, and here's the device. You're not really buying this phone for the camera. The, the camera is, is pretty mid-rangey-ish, so there's nothing really special about that. And then there's another control is we have to chop twice, and that turns on the flash. And I find these controls pretty reliable, actually, right? Yeah, pretty reliable. It turns on the camera, yep. So I haven't had any problems with the motion controls so far. So this phone is locked to Verizon, and it comes with a lot of Verizon bloatware, which is unfortunate, so I had to force a lot of them to stop. Uh, can't really fully uninstall a lot of them, which is unfortunate, but uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, I'm not a Verizon customer, and I don't even live in the US, so what I have to do is tether my main phone to this phone, uh, which is what I have to do anyway, since this phone only accepts eSIM cards. Uh, so an eSIM is electronic SIM, right? So only certain carriers will accept, uh, will work with eSIM. So my uh, main phone is using a Project Fi SIM card, which I don't think has an eSIM, so I can't really use it with this phone anyways, so I'd have to tether it anyways. Um, so yeah, that's probably how I'm going to use this phone. So yeah, that's it guys. That's the Motorola Razr Fold. Very, very interesting device. Um, spend a day with it so far, and I've pretty positive impressions about it despite a lot of the negative reviews online um, because mainly because of the price I think and that's understandable I mean it really depends what you want to use this for right so this is really for early adopters um, for people who really want to be on the bleeding edge of tech and who want a luxury device right uh, it's not for people who just want to get their best value right so even an iPhone 11 Pro which, you know, as expensive as it is, is a better value because, you know, it has a really great camera and top-end specs. Um, but this phone doesn't have a great camera, doesn't have top-end specs, uh, doesn't have great battery life, um, and is locked to Verizon. So there's a lot of issues with it, but it is definitely an eye-catcher, right? And if you look at some of the luxury devices still being sold right now, like there is Porsche design, Huawei, uh, mate and something like that um, a lot of other luxury devices uh, they don't really give you anything new there's nothing new on offer that they give you right they're just expensive uh, for the brand name and then maybe they put some glitter and stuff on the phone but that's what makes them expensive this phone actually gives you something different right it gives you this folding mechanism and I have to say it, it, it does feel pretty well built right it's not like it feels like cheap plastic or anything it does feel pretty solid right it's just a plastic back I wish this was something different but the front feels pretty solid and the materials feel pretty solid so I mean to me this, this is a very unique device and you will definitely get looks and attention wherever you go with this phone so yeah um, for that is it worth you know the asking price I wouldn't pay $1,500 for it that's the original asking price so if you can find this around $1,000 I would say go for it right if you want a device that's pretty unique so um, yeah, that's about it. I think this is a pretty interesting device. Uh, it's a shame that it's locked to Verizon in the US. And in Canada, if you buy it, you also have to buy a plan. So it's pretty much locked as well. Um, technically not, but uh, it is since you have to buy a plan with it. It's, you can't just buy the phone itself and not have a plan. Uh, so yeah, that kind of sucks. The, it's not really widely available, right? That's the main issue. And 
people are going to buy the Z Flip for the specs, right? If you're looking just for a specs comparison, yes, the Galaxy Z Flip is better in pretty much every way specs-wise, but the design of the Motorola Razr is what I like better. Um, I do like the bigger front-facing display right now, which is really good for actually for playing music especially, um, but also for that giant viewfinder, right, if you're taking selfies and stuff like that. That's also more useful than the Z Flip. So there's definitely some redeeming qualities about the Moto Razr over the Z Flip. Um, I also like the fingerprint sensor here and this bottom chin right here is very retro style. And I mean, let's face it, you're not buying this device to get the best camera. You're not buying this device to get the best specs. But what I will say is that as a daily phone, um, there's nothing really wrong with it. But I mean, if you're just using it like daily wise, like even the camera, like it's not that great, but it's not terrible or anything. You can definitely live with it. Um, and the phone, even though it has mid-range specs and a mid-range processor, like it's pretty snappy. I haven't felt any issues with it slowing down or anything, right? Opening apps, everything feels very snappy. Uh, so I don't have, have any... I don't really have any complaints about the speed of the, the phone, despite the mid-range processor. So, yeah, and the OLED display, of course, is really nice. So, yeah, um, no expandable storage, right? Just 128 gigs built in, so that's kind of a bummer, and no headphone jack either. And it's running an outdated version of Android, so I hope that Motorola will update the version to 10 sometime soon. Um, and no SIM card slot, because it's eSIM only. So there's a lot of limitations with this phone. But I would say if you can live with those limitations, then it's a pretty cool th device to have around if you got the money for it, right? So yeah, that's it guys. If you have any questions about the Motorola Razr Fold, please let me know in the comments below. And that's it, thanks for watching. Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to give you guys an update on the Motorola Razr 2020. I've had this for about a week now and Motorola has just released a new update for it that updates it all the way up to Android 10, which is great because, you know, that's one of the things I was complaining about when I first got this phone was that it was still stuck on Android 9, which is an older version, and I'm glad that they finally updated it to the latest version. And uh, just a few other features I want to show you guys as well. So first of all, Breaking news is that the Motorola Razr Fold has been discounted <laughs> by Verizon, pretty much cut in half. So if you thought this phone was expensive before at $1,500, you don't need to think that anymore because it's been dropped pretty much to $750. And um, that's really kind of annoying for me because I bought this, you know, over $1,000. Um, and then less than a week later, Verizon drops the price and cuts it in half with a buy one, get one free deal. Uh, which really is um, is annoying to me. But anyways, that's good for you guys who haven't bought the Razer yet, right? That's uh, a, it's a much lower price, and at that price, I would I would recommend it, actually, because 750 is a pretty good price for a phone like this. It's very innovative. So one of the features is the display right now, it's off, um, but it does automatically sense your movement, so there is some kind of ultra sonic sound waves being projected from the bottom so if i attempt to move my hand over here it will automatically sense it and turn on so that's what's cool about this phone so it will dim but it will sense it so it has some motion sensors here that's capable of detecting your movement and it knows when you're near and then it'll automatically turn on so that's pretty cool so this phone is actually pretty interesting because it's actually not made in china so if you look on the back here uh there, maybe you can see that. It says, designed by Motorola, made in India. That's really interesting because Motorola is actually owned by Lenovo, which is a Chinese brand. So you would think that it's made in China, and, you know, most smartphones are made in China anyways. But for a phone of this caliber, you know, with so many complex parts and being as high-priced as it is, I'm really surprised that it's made in India because, you know, usually China has all the manufacturing expertise, in India has you know lower cost of labor so I'm actually surprised something this complex would actually not be made in China you know I would think it would be but it's made in India instead which is pretty interesting all right so other than that um, with the new Android 10 update there is some new features that's been added particularly to this uh, this secondary display up here and I really like the secondary display like I said, it's one of the main reasons I chose the Motorola Razr over the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip is because of this bigger secondary display here, which is uh, 2.6 inches, right? And it's actually quite useful. So, like I said, um, you can turn this on. 
all right? And after the Android 10 update, there's a few things you can do from the screen here, right? So like I said, you can scroll down from the top and you have access to the regular Android stuff right here. But you can also unlock it. And then once you unlock it, then there's a lot more things you can do. So you can swipe to the left. And if you swipe to the left, you'll actually have access to the selfie camera. And then from here, you can go into video mode if you want. Swipe between the photo and the video mode. You can change the aspect ratio, uh, the flash. And you can change some other settings like the timer as well. But anyways, you have a quick shortcut uh, to the selfie camera here, which is uh, pretty interesting. And it is using the main primary camera. So that's cool. And then you can also do some other settings from here. But this is a very nice short access to the camera right here. Then you just press home if you want to go back to the main screen here. And the main display you know, shows the time and the weather and the date. And then if you swipe this way to the right, uh, you can add a shortcut for your contacts. So here are all your contacts. You can choose to add a shortcut to call them. And you can also make a phone call as well. So you can have access to the dialer as well. So you can do all of this from the secondary display, which is really nice. Right. Now, the reason why you would want to do this instead of using the full display is because it doesn't take up as much battery life. Uh, this phone doesn't have a great battery, so you want to kind of extend your battery life as much as you can. And using all this from the small display is going to help with that. So yeah, you can think of this secondary display as kind of like a bigger smartwatch. Like if you want to do some minimal interactions with it, you can, and it's really useful for that and also preserves battery life. Then of course, if you want to have the full experience, you just open it up and like right now I'm playing music, right? So I can play music here, right? And then I just close my phone. And like I said, in my other review, I think this is one of the best phones for playing music because you can have easy access to your uh, music right here. So you, like I said, it shows the artwork. You can adjust the volume from here as well. And it's very, very easy to hold. So it's a very, very nice music player, right? It's like having a, it's almost like holding an old school iPod because of the size, right? <laughs> um, but it's a very, very sleek, futuristic, you know, music player because of the folding mechanism. And obviously there's no other music player kind of like this. So that is pretty cool. So there are a few ways to access your music player from here. So from the unlock state, what you can do is actually you can swipe this way to immediately have access to the song that you're playing. And this works with Spotify. This works with any of the music player apps that you install on this phone. So, you know, I can play from here. And I'm not going to play too much because of, again, the YouTube copyright stuff. But yeah, you can have all your music controls from here. Yeah, so this is from the actual lock state. If I want to unlock it, I can just press the on button and then pull from below and then unlock it. And now you have access to your music player from here. So you can have access to your music player several different ways. And this is like a small tile kind of view. And you know that that all works. So yeah, there's a few ways to access the music player, right? So in the on unlocked position, you just pull down and you have access to it. And yeah, you have access to your notifications as well. Then in the locked state right here, which is the state that I think most people will have it in since, you know, when you're walking or running outside, you're not going to actually have this unlocked all the time. Then it's pretty easy to access your music player. You just swipe to the left or swipe to the right and you'll have access to it. And you just got to tap it from here. Yep. So that's all really convenient, I think. And that makes this one of the best music player phones, in my opinion. It's also one of the most unique, too. Um, and that's pretty much it for the new features added in Android 10. And oh, yeah. So there's one more feature I have to show you. Um, this on button on the side here. So you press it once to turn it off or to wake it up. And then you double tap it for Google Assistant. So you can double tap it like this. What's the weather like tomorrow? Tomorrow in Burnaby, it'll be partly cloudy with 
with a high of 19 and a low of 10. Yep. So that's a very, very quick, easy way to access Google Assistant from this phone. You don't have to open it up or anything, just double tap the on button and it can be in the locked state and it'll still work like that. So yeah, I find that pretty useful as well. And uh, that's pretty much it for the Motorola Razr Fold. It's still a very, very cool phone um, and it's discounted right now. You know, at 750 or even $800, I think it's pretty cool to pick this one up. I know that's still expensive, but that's still like a huge, massive discount from the price it was when it was first released. So keep in mind, this released originally at $1,500, and uh, it's now been massively discounted. So you can definitely pick this up for a pretty good price right now. Um, I still think this is a, this is a cool phone. And, oh, there's Wind of Fire. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, anyways, you guys can see my music collection. I have such great taste, taste in music, right? Um, and it's the notifications. Of course, you can swipe up to access that. Um, so yeah, you can do a lot more from the secondary display now with the new updates. And I just think this is a really, really cool phone to use. Like you have this kind of bigger smartwatch type of interface. And oh yeah, so of course, I tried it with my Moto 360. This is my Motorola 360 third generation, which I also picked up. I also have a review of this on my YouTube as well. You guys can search for that. But um, this also pairs very well because obviously Motorola, Motorola, right? So from here, let's see if I can actually have access to the music player from here as well. So I customized this shortcut to play music. So this is the song I was playing before. So obviously. You can go to next track. You can all control it with here because this is a smartwatch, right? So if I access it from here, I can see, oh, I swipe and oh, this is the song I was just playing. You can change it, right? And both pictures should change right here. I right? said so I'm controlling it from here. So pretty cool, right? I can control the music from my watch or my phone. And I know this one seems like a bigger smartwatch, but uh, that's that's pretty much what it is, really. It's like a bigger smartwatch interface. Yep, so uh, yeah, anyways, that works pretty well. Uh, Motorola with Motorola. So if you guys are thinking of pairing the Moto 360 with it, of course you can do that. That all works pretty well. Anyways, um, yeah, that's the Motorola Razr Fold 2020 in the Moto 360 third generation. Both of them were released this year, uh, a few months ago, so they're pretty new devices. Uh, but yeah, if you're thinking of picking them up, then I would say it's a pretty cool combination, and you'll definitely be the coolest <clears throat> or uh, nerdiest kid on the block <laughs> if you choose to be viewed that way. Uh, but yeah, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any comments or feedback, let me know in the comments below.